Welcome to the Magic Box. I'm John Carrington and today we have a great show about Australia. Oh, we're going to learn so much about Australia. I don't want you to miss a single bit of this. So don't touch that dial. Don't change the channel. We'll be right back. To the magic box. I'm John Carrington and I want to let you in on some secrets. Well, I actually want to show you some secrets <laughs> and hopefully somewhere along the line you'll be entertained and maybe a bit puzzled and baffled. One of the tools in the magician's handbox is surprise. If I surprise you, sometimes I can do a trick. Well, let's see if I have a surprise here. Oh, wow. You see me with an object. I don't know what it is, but do you know what it is? <laughs> wow. That's a sparkly trick. <laughs> Just something to give you a surprise. Now, as the magician surprises you, the next step is to entertain you. I have here giant paper clips. Uh, they're pretty ordinary, except that they're kind of large. But um, <clears throat> now I bring out the interesting stuff. Big money. Yeah, baby. Big money. Big money. Okay, it's not real, but it's big. <laughs> big money. These paper clips on this big money can make something very surprising happen. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. We use the big money to make something happen. Let's see. Let's go here. And here. I wonder what's going to happen with the big money and the paper clips. Let's see, let's see. I pull, 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 and whoa! Linked together. Now here's the part that really baffled me when I first saw this trick. The magician who performed this says, well, that's what you do with big money and paper clips. But what happens when you place a genuine solid silver, solid silver plated ring of beads around the big money. And fold the money and put the paper clips on there again. Paper clips. 
paper clips. What do you think is going to happen? Make a guess. Before I, before I pull the big money, let's see if you can figure out what's going to happen. Two paper clips. Let's see. One, two, three. Amazing. The paper clips are joined to the necklace of solid silver plated beads. <laughs> and this is the magic box. We want to surprise you and we want to entertain you. And more importantly, we want to send you to the library to find some tricks of your own. Be right back. Back to the magic box. When you give a magician enough rope, he will do a trick. <laughs> That's right, do a trick. Okay, and this is one of my favorites right here. I call this make a knot in thin air. So I take this and I go like that, and boom, there's a knot in thin air. I'll do it again. If you have a set of, of shoe strings that are no longer needed for a pair of tennis shoes, you might want to try this. A knot created in midair. If you want to try this with a shoe string, you have to give the one end of the string a little whirl like that. And if you notice, a little circle develops right in the middle of the rope or the shoe string. Here it is again. A little circle develops. With this end of the shoestring, you aim for the center of that circle and you throw the end through the whirl. See that big circle? And there is a three-figured knot. You're learning magic on the magic box. We'll be right back. That was short. <laughs> Who knows where milk comes from? The refrigerator! Before that. The grocery store! Why don't we visit a farm and see where milk really comes from? Yeah, yeah. It's always a good idea to get down to the root of things. Let me try! My turn! My turn! Visiting a farm is a great way to learn. It's an utter sensation. Hey, give the udders a turn. Get it? Udders. It's cool. It's sweet. Fresh from the farm. Let's eat. Let's go to a farm. Koala Walla from Dragons and Things by Loretto Gubernatis. Koala Walla was a bear of extraordinary well-bred manners. For one thing, he always carried a handkerchief folded neatly in his breast pocket. For another, he used the phrase, pardon me, more often than one might ordinarily do. And for a third, he always took his tea precisely six o'clock every evening. Not one minute to six. Not one minute past six. But precisely six o'clock on the dot. Now, when he took his tea, he had the most perfect etiquette of any of the friends from down under. He set the tea things most tidily indeed. To have been invited to a tea with Koala Walla was a privilege to all and they told their friends. And 
they did buy most <clears throat> dreadfully for the invitation. Koala Walla did always serve the best tea and scones in all the outback. As a rule, most of the fold of friends felt that Koala Walla was most definitely one of the upper crust. Okay, it said most definitely one of the upper crust. But sometimes it annoyed them most extraordinarily. For as Clyde the <clears throat> hare would say, Tammy Hyde, if that fellow don't put on some hody toady airs. One would think he'd been born in the blooming palace itself instead of on a blooming eucalyptus tree. Oh, come now, do give the old fella a break. And Willie the Wombat, feeling a bit sad for Koala Walla. Why, he's only lonely, that's all. It was, after all, a eucalyptus tree, wasn't it? That's a bit of class, isn't it? Lonely me I, said Clyde. Why, he's nothing but a fuss budget. <laughs> what maitre d' want the likes of him? It's just his way of filling the time to fuss over things, said Willie. It keeps his mind occupied. Why, he'd need to keep that blinking mind occupied, said Clyde rudely. Why, he's as slow as a tree sloth. <laughs> that may be, my mate. That may be so, my mate, said Willie sadly. But it wasn't always that way. You see, once a long, long time ago, in his youth, Koala Walla was the most dashing, handsome devil indeed. Why, all the ladies were always looking up his tree all right. Unfortunately, he wasn't interested in all, and he wasn't aware of his look. What no one knew was that Koala Walla was most extremely shy. And maybe a little too tied to his mother's apron strings. <laughs> so was that try as they would none of the lovely ladies could get the time of day. Now one day when Koala Walla was down by the Outback River, he spied on the other side in the bush the most handsome koala he had ever seen. She seemed so demure and gentle and also quite shy. But when Koala Walla waved a shy hello, almost immediately the other koala waved back at the very same time. Now, every day, day after day, Koala Walla would go down to the river and sure enough the other koala would be there right in the bush just like the clockwork. And so it was that koala pined away for his lady on of the lake. There were as it seems so many birds in his hand but he preferred the one in the bush. <laughs> Eventually all the other ladies gave up and found other mates. They got tired of waiting for poor Koala Walla to make up his mind. Then one day Tan Me Hide Fred came along on the other side of the river. You know the one who lives in the shed on the outback with Matilda the mule? Anyway Koala Walla watched him excitedly as he approached his lady of the bush. Then all at once, this mankind bent down where the lady sat staring p 
pensively back at Koala Walla and began to tug at something directly behind her. Suddenly a large piece of metal fender right came loose in Fred's hands and he picked it up and carried it away over his head. You know how much debris is often left in the outback? Anyway, if you, it was then and only then that Koala Walla realized that all this time he had been staring at his own reflection in a piece of tin fender from an old jeep. There was no lady of the lake, and when Koala Walla turned around, there were no more lady koalas his own age left. Well, said Wooly the Wombat, coming to the end of the story, I'd rather say a nasty trick of nature had been played on him. Everyone knows a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. Why, what a chump, <laughs> declared Clyde the Hare. In love with his own mug, was he? With that, they arrived at Koala Walla's door. As you see, they had been invited to tea, and it was now just a minute to six. And as Koala Walla fussed over the right napkin and which fork they must all use, Clyde just made the best of it. For you see, he really did like Koala Walla as a friend, and after all, a little table manners never really hurt anyone. Did it now? The end. <laughs> Boys and girls, did you like that story about Koala Walla Bear? Well, I got news for you. When he put that hanky in his pocket, it reminded me of a magic trick that I'd love to do with a hanky from my pocket. Oh, well, what do you know? There's a hanky in my pocket. And, oh, well, there's the hanky. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's a nice little hanky. I got a hanky. Oh, timey kangaroo down sports. Tie me kangaroo down. Don't let him go money in the mud. Judd, tie me kangaroo down. Oh, what do you know? It's an egg. Tie me kangaroo down. Sports, tie me kangaroo down. Don't let him go running in the mud. Judd, tie me kangaroo down. This right here is a wonderful trick that I love to show you, uh, but you see, there's one, one, one problem. Uh, this trick. Uh, requires me to make eggs disappear. And as you know, eggs are very expensive, therefore you don't want to make them disappear. Or do you? I don't know. Let's find out. Find me kangaroo down. Find me kangaroo down. Don't let me run in the mud, Judd. Find me kangaroo down. Find me kangaroo down. Find me kangaroo down. Don't let him go running in the mud, Judd. Tie me kangaroo down. 
Abracadabra, Magic Presto, and well, what do you know? There's the egg. Now, I'm going to teach you how to do this. Now, because I started here on Magic, I'm going to teach you how to do this straight for handkerchief. What do you teach yourself? You want raw chicken egg. And you take that raw chicken egg. Well, actually, if you're a beginner, you should use a raw egg. Get a boiled egg. That's probably better for you. If you have a raw egg, chances are the yolk will be on you. <laughs> the yolk will be on you. Okay. Right. You get yourself a handkerchief or bag like this, and you put the egg inside the bag. Now, because I like you and you're my audience, I'm going to show you how this is done. You put the egg in the bag. Now, while the audience is watching this hand, you very slightly take the egg out of the bag, and but you got to hold your hand normal, just like this. And you take the egg, and while they're watching you, you you you're watching this hand. And see how the bag hides it? You slide the egg under your armpit, and then you can really go wild with this trick. <laughs> go wild with this trick. Take your, take the bag. You put your hand inside the bag. At least clap your hand inside the bag like that. Grab the bag like this. Turn the bag inside out. Show them the bag just like that there. Put your hand inside the bag just like this here. Clap your hand inside the bag like that. Grab the bag like this. Twist the bag up. Twist the bag up. Hit yourself on the hand. Hit yourself on the leg. And the egg has disappeared. Uh, what was that? Somebody just came into the room. They asked, what happens if somebody asks me to raise my arm? You know, I never really thought about that. But, ah, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Uh, reach down to the bag and, ta-da. There's the egg. Now, for those of you who were fooled by that one, I'm going to show you how this is really done. What you do is you take the egg and you pretend to place it in the bag. Pretend to place it in the bag. You take the egg out of the bag and you fake like you put it underneath your armpit. Now, those of you who are watching my armpit, you probably saw me do this and you were probably fooled there. But what you really do is while the audience blinks, and everybody blinks, you time it so that when the audience blinks, you take the egg and place it under, very carefully, under your chin. And then you really go wild with this trick, really go wild with this trick. Clap your hand like this, put your hand inside the bag just like that there. Grab the bag, switch the bag, put your hand inside the bag. Turn the bag inside out just like that there. Show the bag, and just show the bag like that, show the bag like that. Put your hand inside the bag just like this here. Put your hand inside the bag. Right. Turn the bag inside out. Clap your hand inside the bag just like there. Grab the bag like this. Twist the bag up. Twist the bag up. Hit this up on the hand. Hit this up on the leg. And the egg has vanished. Uh, what, what's that? Somebody wants to know, do you have to hold your neck like this? What happens when they ask you to raise your neck? You know, I never really thought about that. Ah! I reach down to the bag and ta-da! There's the egg. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for paying attention, but remember, handkerchiefs belong in your pocket. Eggs belong in the refrigerator. So give yourselves a big egg. Eggs belong in the refrigerator. Uh, I guess the yolk is on me. <laughs> Imagine being a hero. Imagine fighting the bad guys, saving the world, all that good stuff. Now imagine fighting an enemy you can't see or touch. Extra life. Play games. Heal kids. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking Australian style. <laughs> and that's the language they use in Down Under. Hey, good day, mate. <laughs> it certainly is a good day. Because you're watching The Magic Box. This is a show that not only teaches the importance of reading, but also the importance of good manners. Good day, mate. That's a very mannerable way of greeting somebody in Australia. Hello. Is a wonderful way to greet somebody. And you know something? Magic words like please and thank you make nice things happen. Please and thank you 
Wonderful words, words to live by. Please and thank you. I have here some cards and these cards allow me to <clears throat> show you the importance of manners because you see sometimes we have to <clears throat> share what we know. I know something. I know something. But how did I get there? How do I get to sharing what I know? Well, let's start here. Fan the deck. And here are the colors of the rainbow. You know, things are always nicer when you share a smile, when you share a pleasant attitude. Why should you share? Because the other person might be full of joy and happiness and when you share your joy they'll return the joy. Our friend Koala Walla Bear loved sharing. In fact Koala Walla Bear would share the finest tea that he could get a hold of. And of course living in a eucalyptus tree meant that he could spice up his tea. <laughs> So when Koala Walla Bear invited people over to share, he was trying to chase the blues away. Koala Walla Bear knew that treating people with good manners and good etiquette would bring smiles to their faces and change their blue day into a bright, sunshiny day. Koala Walla Bear use manners as a tool to chase out his loneliness. He was a lonely little koala bear. But you know something? By sharing with his friends, he could paint his own story. He could take the blank pages and fill them with a story that would be exciting and interesting and return his friends to a state of happiness. Yes, happiness can be small. Happiness can be large. Happiness can be dragging your friends, dragging your friends to a tea party. Koala Walla Bear had good manners and so should you and that's a lesson from the magic box. And speaking of dragons, get the book, Dragons and Things. Hey, it's a good read. Get the book, Dragons and Things. Good day, mate. We'll be right back. Hey, mate. <laughs> so I hope you learned a lot about Australia today. Australia, the land down under. So don't stay down under. Go to the library, get a book, and learn some more. This is the Magic Box. Until next time, I'll see you at the library uh, or down under. <laughs>